Day one has come to a close in the trial for the 2016 murder of well-known Abilene realtor Tom Niblo. A brief shooting timeline, a murder weapon, and a mountain of evidence have been submitted as the prosecution lays out its case. KTAP's Noah McKinney giving us now a wrap-up of the first day of those court proceedings. The jury settled in for a long day of presentations Tuesday at the Taylor County Courthouse. Of the many details discussed, two major points stood out in the prosecution's opening statements regarding the shooting of Abilene realtor Tom Niblo that took place December 12, 2016. Point one. Assistant District Attorney Aaron Stamey told the jury that Cheryl Niblo, Tom's wife, was taking her medication that morning before heading off to work. Those plans interrupted when she allegedly heard ten loud bangs. Cheryl then locked the bathroom door and headed out an exterior door to seek help. All the while, loud pounding could be heard on the other side of the bathroom door. Finding no one home at her neighbor's house, Cheryl crossed South 14th to River Oaks Boulevard, where she asked a pedestrian to call 911. Point two. Stamey revealed that the murder weapon, a handgun, was found fewer than 900 feet from the Niblo house, though that was just under two years after the shooting. That gun fished out of a creek by a 14-year-old while they were playing, and turned over to police by their grandparent. Though the gun had to be cleaned after being in the creek for so long, Stamey says a ballistics test later revealed a match to the casings found at the scene, further stating that the gun was registered in 2008 to Luke Switzer. Niblo's brother-in-law, and the man now accused of killing him. That gun apparently never reported stolen or lost. In the latter half of the day, testimony was heard from, among others, APD Detective Lynn Beard and a forensics expert. Detective Beard was a part of the initial investigation, as well as a 2017 investigative review ordered by then-APD Chief Stan Standridge. Officer Beard reported that in 2017, the amount of digital evidence was so overwhelming, they involved the Office of the Attorney General for help. That evidence including 14 cell phones, 7 desktops, 8 tablets, and 5 laptops, as well as various other storage devices. Forensics expert Diana Arndt testified that in the Niblo home, 5 latent fingerprints were found, and only one was matched. Those prints belonging to a contractor who is doing some remodeling work at the home. The trial is now set to resume Wednesday morning. For BigCountryHomePage.com, I'm Noah McKinney. Thank you, Noah. Though the murder weapon was mentioned during the prosecution's opening statements, it has not yet been presented as evidence, and none of the prints or evidence submitted so far have linked Switzer to the crime or the crime scene. Testimony was also heard regarding the home's alarm system, revealing that the system was not armed that morning. For full details on today's proceedings and testimony, you can go to the KTAB website, bigcountryhomepage.com.